I'm Jen Mallon. Welcome to Come Home. Here we are again with our copy, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. Share with your friends to tune in today because we have got a spectacular, encouraging show for you. My guest today is far from an ordinary entrepreneur and minister of the gospel. He is known as the Empire Builder, and he has a heart that's completely centered on the financier, and he helps them completely focus on their God-given mission, which is educating, empowering, and equipping people around the globe to build empires that transfer wealth through the generations. Dr. Robert Watkins has God's heart for true prosperity and lasting wealth. You will not want to miss this show. You're going to learn. You're going to grow. Uh, the men in your life, tell them to sneak in and enjoy this incredible conquering man of God. So before we go to this segment, we have a, a life hack for you. And so we're going to go and enjoy this incredible community outreach. Welcome back to Brain Hacks today. Nancy and Christy here, and we're going to talk to you about chemicals that sabotage your brain. Yes, I'm telling you, our everyday household products, cleaners, beauty products, they are loaded with chemicals that are toxic. You know, even our fertilizers, pesticides that are on foods, uh, all this stuff collects in our bodies. And people, by the time they're 35 years old, are actually to a point of toxic overload. Yes. Um, incidents of breast cancer, prostate cancer, brain cancer, these things are multiplying because they are the areas that get overloaded because they're our fatty, fatty right. tissue areas. We had no idea that fluoride and chlorine and even the bromine that they put in their flowers, processing flowers that you, we bake with, we're going to sabotage our glands. And as she said, we're one. When you hurt a gland, you're hurting the whole thing. Absolutely. So we want to just do a little informational exchange here. Uh, this heavy metal craze has infiltrated everything from our air to our water, um, to even Tattoos. the tattoo ink that people are now marking themselves up with. Uh, Europe, the European Council, actually does not allow U.S. ink to be imported because of the level of our, the metal concentration of the tattoo ink coming out of America is considered toxic. Red is the most toxic color, has the most amount of mercury, and also they've been finding a lot of microorganisms what is that? That's your basis for parasites. Everybody has parasites and our current system of medicine, it only treats the symptoms, but if it's a parasitic infection, it Not doesn't the, get to the root cause. It doesn't get cause. to the root cause and we're all about getting to the root cause. Absolutely. you got to get these parasites, these metal um, loads on our body out. It is your body is fighting against itself. Things like arthritis, yes. inflammation, all of that is a root cause to cancer, depression, yeah. heart disease. You'll hear us talking about chelating these heavy metals out. Chelate mm -hmm. is the word for claw. It's just like it's going to reach in there and grab it. So for mercury, the thing that grabs mercury is sulfur. How are you going to increase your sulfur in your body, which ultimately helps rescue your brain? You've got to have high sulfur foods. The yolk of the egg, the yellow part, is full of sulfur. Onions, garlic, MSM, uh, even DMSO that you get at the feed store is full of sulfur, and I add that into my bathtub. So there's ways that you can start pulling heavy metals out. There are, but you also have to stop putting them in. Mm -hmm. So continuing to do these things that will consistently leach endlessly yeah. heavy metals into your body, even your dental. Be aware, when we were younger, all of our dental fillings were this old silver fillings, which yeah. all have a mercury content. Yes. Now, neurological disorders have been associated with those, mm -hmm. and you can find dentists that will actually take them out. Yes. Carefully. carefully there's a way to remove them very carefully yes don't so, just let any dentist but look for ones that specialize in it you can go to her site the 
Medic 360. Soulmedics360.com. Yeah. And my Nancy Conwell or nanasrainbow.net. And you can find more information about detoxing your body. Wasn't that special? I love sharing things like that. Well, as I said, today we have an incredible guest. I'm so excited to hear the things that he is going to say and teach us and help us. His name is Dr. Robert Watkins, and he is the chairman and CEO at Conquer Worldwide. Don't you love that name? Kings and priests uh, are who he raises up and helps. He's an incredible leader, and he has received recognition and accolades. Uh, he got a Lifetime Achievement Award from President Obama, and he's been featured on many secular uh, news channels because of the nuggets that he brings from the word. Now, something that really touched my heart as I learned about his life is that he was orphaned at birth. I understand that and uh, can relate. And he was adopted by an incredible family who imparted wonderful things into his life. And so I know that that will come out today. He is an author, has many books, but one that we're gonna talk about today is called Chosen, Becoming the Person That You Were Meant to Be. That's something that we all can benefit and grow from. So Dr. Robert, thank you so much thank you for, having for me, being Jen. here. Yes, thank I'm you. so excited. Yes. <laughs> okay, so there are lots of people out there who talk about wealth and wealth building, but I, I, your approach and your strategy is not just get, get rich quick and mm -hmm. you know, if you, you know, sow this, you'll get this. You have a very unique layout and plan. So yeah. share that with us because you, yeah. that's something you really bring to the Christian community, the secular community mm -hmm. and, and to men and just to families. Yeah. And we all need to learn about money yeah. and, and generational wealth. So yeah. teach us, help us. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Well, you know, someone who grew up without money and when I came to the Lord, I was like a heretic because I was interested in this business stuff and my little uh, Southern Baptist Church there in Monroe, Michigan said, all that money and business, Robert, all that stuff is, that's the world, but <laughs> God is in here. And I said, wait a minute, it all belongs to God. Yes. And I began to say, everybody around me is broken in poverty and can't pay their bills and we can't, you know, my grandmother gets sick, we couldn't respond. But I realized in the Word there are more than 2,350 scriptures in the Bible on how to handle money, how to grow it, how to save it, how to give it to the next generation, how to inherit it so you never run out. More than 2,350 scriptures on, on, on money. But in words like money and wealth and riches and inheritance, these are God words. Yeah. Real estate is a God word. Inheritance is a God word spoken from the heart of God to his people. So vision was not a word that some Wall Street, you know, smarty pants, you know, came up with. That's a God word that the world has stolen these principles uh, yeah. and have prospered from them. And, it, and these words were meant for God's people. And so these words have real meaning. And I've been taking these into the churches in the conferences for 25 years and, and teaching people. I used to teach school at Emory University in Atlanta and uh, I love going into these settings and teaching young people. But then I realized that the people in the church need it because they didn't know this. And so we teach about everything except this one subject that we're all afraid of, money, which money is a God word. It was God's idea. It came from God's spirit to his people. And so we're to be good stewards over those things. So I teach people how to be good stewards over it, but let's not be afraid of it right. because the very thing that most people need um, to, for their vision, for their church, for their ministry, for their business is the very thing that the devil is trying to make us afraid of. Yeah, yeah. that's his job. Yeah. And he does it very well yeah. to try to get us not to talk about the things that Jesus had no problem talking no about. No problem, talking about. Mm -hmm. In fact, God's charge to man, be fruitful, be multiply, you know, yeah. subdue and habit. Yeah. So he wants you to do that in every area, Absolutely. which includes money. Yeah. And Jesus talked about money more than anything. Yeah, he, he did. He, he addressed people's hearts. And so I love that you're doing that. My mom went to Emory. Oh, uh, she did? She did. Oh. Uh, she did. Yeah. Uh, and well, okay, so 
what kind of resistance have you faced mm -hmm. as you bring this message yeah. into the body? And then how have you been able to help those who have resisted it overcome that and really see it in the word? Yeah, well, that's a great question. And I'll just tell you that um, a dear uh, lady, she's 73 years old, her name is Miss Liberta, and she had worked as a janitor in an elementary school um, for 30 years. And the year that she was supposed to retire, they fired her. And, and she came into office broken, and she needed help, and she had three sons, and they would say, well, mom, just go down, just sit down somewhere. And, and um, she outlived her two husbands, but she was just so broken, and she gave her life to this thing, and she came to us, and, she, and we asked her one question, what did God tell you to do? She's 73 years old at the time. What did God tell you to do? And she said, and it stunned all of us, God told her to start a bed and breakfast. But at 73? No, at 73. <laughs> Good for now, her. Now, she'd been in church all her life. No one taught her about business or wealth or riches, none of this stuff. Strategies, only time she heard about money is when it was time to give. But really no understanding how to manage it, et cetera. She said, God told me to start a bed and breakfast. She had no experience, no money, no credit, no anything. It was just a vision from God. And we said, you know what? If you go out, if you find it, if you find a building, we'll help you. That's just like what Elijah told the widow woman, right? He yeah. said, go around in your neighborhood, knock on doors, and borrow not a few pots, right? And so that's where a lot of Christians stop. Yeah. With the, when the prophetic word or the prophetic instruction comes, they're like, oh, no, that's too much work. That can't be God. That's just too much work. Just write me a check, Dr. Yeah. Watkins. Just yeah. do that. And, and she came back literally three months later, and in Fairburn, Georgia, she found a facility that had foreclosed, now, it was $795,000. Of course, she didn't have it. And so we were able to raise her credit score. We had got enough money raised for her for a down payment. She took that money, around $200,000, and she closed on the property. Oh. And we helped her write a business plan. And so now the three boys that told her, Mom, go sit down someplace, <laughs> they work for her today. Praise God. And listen, today she's the largest tither in her church. Thank she you, has Jesus. five employees, Serenity uh, Bed and Breakfast in Fairburn, Georgia, and she's doing great. And it just came from the Word of God. That's right. It came, what makes you different, what makes you special is not starting a business yeah. or starting a ministry. What makes you special is that God is behind your dream. Yeah. And God was there all along. She just needed to stop and look at what is that God called me to do and get revelation on that. And then, just like with Peter, he had so much fish that he had to call in partners. <laughs> but you need divine partners, right? Yeah. And so she just needed a divine partner. And that's why I tell people out there, you don't have time for riffraff relationships. You yeah. want divine <laughs> relationships. And that's what she got. And um, now today she is the largest tire in her church and we couldn't be more proud of her. And so, but the resistance was always for her uh, Mr. Berto, you're supposed to just <laughs> sit here and just come to church. Yeah. Just pay your tithes and be happy and die. Yeah. And life was more than that. God has so much more yeah. for her. And uh, that, was, that was just a wonderful story. I love how you and your company have been committed to helping people birth their dreams and unlock their dreams. Yeah. Because, yeah, the Bible does tell us to to be still and know that he's God. There's times he does tell us to sit down, but usually it's because he wants us to sit in his presence, mm -hmm. not because he doesn't want us to be active yeah. or using our faith. So you gave her, you know, faith and encouragement, a plan and partnership, yeah. and then her dream became a reality. Yeah, yeah. So there's people watching and maybe they're sitting. So share some of the character traits of how to be a good steward of what God's given you and how to be a kingdom builder and a yeah. wealth builder and how to get up if, yeah. because people are sitting and sometimes they say, oh, life's passed me by or I'm too old or I'm too this or I'm too that or too excuses, lies. Yeah. So tell them some character traits and how they can arise and do what God's called them to do. Yeah, well, the first thing we have to do is what Jesus told us to do when concerning money, which is pass the money test. He said, if you are faithful yeah. with unrighteous mammon, you know, 
then I will give you that which is your own. Then you shall have what you say. And so you'll have the true riches, he calls it. But you have to, first of all, be faithful. That just means being a good steward, being a good manager, right? Yeah. And so you, only the people that get promoted are people that are good managers. Yeah. And so, but the true riches, the end goal is not money. The true riches are things like answered prayer, yeah. uh, having your body healed, your family being saved, having the presence of God on your life, having the anointing go before you. You know, you speak the word and you see it. Those are the true riches. Yeah. Having the wisdom of God and having the peace of mind of God. Those are the true riches. And he says, in, in order for you to be uh, eligible for the true riches, you have to pass this test. So God wants you to have money as long as money doesn't have you. Yeah. And so the perp, you have to have money with a mission, right? So when you pass that test, the second thing you need to do is really hear from God. I wrote a book called How to Hear from God, right? And so we don't need another good idea. We need a God idea, go. right? Those things are guaranteed to work. So when you have the expectation in the end, which is I just want God's presence. I just want yeah. to do what God's called me to do. I want to be a blessing to Miss yeah. Liberta. I want to be a blessing yeah. to my church. I want to help my community. You know, God bless me with a car so I can help bring people to church. And yeah. Lord bless me with wisdom so I can be like Solomon and win people to, you know, to the kingdom of God. When you have that as a goal, God gets involved. That's right. Because the first thing we ask is not as your business plan. We don't care about that. We want to know did God call you to do this? There you go. Are you chosen to do this? And many are called, but few are chosen. And the chosen ones are the ones that show up to do the call. And that's where we start. So it's a matter of the heart. And then money is, is easy after that. Yeah. You know, and so but then we, we mix up what wealth and riches are. Psalms 112 verse 3 says wealth and riches shall be in your house. But we think that money is the same thing as wealth. It's not. Mm -hmm. Wealth is your vision. Wealth yeah. is what God said to you. You can't see wealth. We look at a big house. We say, well, that's wealth. That's not wealth. That's riches. You yep. can't see wealth. Right. Wealth is what God said to you. Now, riches are things you can see. Money, houses, cars, etc. You know, the things we fight over. Yeah. But riches follows wealth. Wealth. Yeah. You know, wealth is a is a is a mindset. And my mindset is I can do all things through Christ. That's a mindset. Yeah. A mindset is, is there anything too hard for God? Right. That's a mindset. Yes. Now money follows wealth. Money follows vision. Money follows a wealthy mindset. And so I'm not trying to chase money. Are you kidding me? See, anytime you do anything for money, you will you will um uh, you'll be like me, bald headed. You'll be stressed <laughs> out, right? You're you're not stressed out. I was stressed out. Okay, when, when you used to chase money, you were stressed when out. When I used right? to chase money, okay. I was stressed out. Because you're not stressed money. out. You have right. a piece of God. I had a piece you're, of God you're anointed. <laughs> but but there are people out there that are still chasing the check. Right. They're still chasing. Yeah. They hate their jobs and you know they have this life that they created. They got these mortgages now and and, and they can't afford it and in, and they're in debt. And God has a plan for them too. Yeah. And the switch, the paradigm shift that we have to make is from chasing money to chasing wealth, which is your purpose. Yeah. Which is how God made you. Your destiny, your yeah. assignment, your your kingdom, your your identity. It's yeah. it's seeking that. Yeah. Do yeah. you think there's a, do you think that there is an anointing for wealth? There's absolutely an anointing for wealth. You know, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the kings were anointed to bring in large amounts of resources. Abraham yeah. was wealthy. Solomon was wealthy. David was wealthy. And, you know, when they operated in their kingship, yeah. money was attracted to them. It was important yeah. for them to have resources because they were distributors of God's goodness. Yeah. And so there are many people that are called to be power brokers. They are, they are wealthy. The, the children of Issachar. Yes. The Bible says, and he numbered them. They were the least number out of all of them. And they were God's risk takers. They yeah. were the bankers. They were the people that held God's stuff and, and distributed that. And so there are many people that are out there. They don't even really know it. Mm -mm. But it's like Miss Liberta is locked up on the inside of them. They just had the wrong identity. Yeah. Once you see it, it's like, man, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to be a community leader. I'm supposed to be a marketplace leader. I'm supposed to be the guy who's given the jobs away, not the person that is seeking the job, but the guy that's given the job. We need more of that in the kingdom. We do. Yeah. Okay. So Dr. Robert, you could have given in 
and adopted a mentality like I was given away, my mom and dad didn't want me, I was adopted into a family which was probably difficult and dysfunctional because every family is, yeah. including yeah. mine, but you could have made excuses. Yeah. How did you embrace this kingdom, empire building, more than a conqueror mindset? Yeah. How did, how did Jesus put those seeds and then you cooperate. Yeah. Because some people are watching going, man, I wish I had his confidence. Man, <laughs> I wish I had his exuberance. I wish, how, how, did, how did you overcome your circumstances and say, oh, no, 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 yeah. no. Yeah, many people just see the end result of God's glory on my life. And that's not a cocky statement. That's mm -mm. A, a humble statement because I was born in an orphanage and up until recently, I didn't know who my birth mother was and my birth father was. I had no idea how I got in the earth. And all I knew that I was an orphan for a period of time in my life, downtown Detroit, and, and the orphanage was overran with little black baby boys back in the 60s. And, um, but there was a executive director who was a Christian, I later found out, and uh, he had the mindset of going on local television and, and putting up pictures of these little black baby boys and saying, please come and adopt these, you know, <laughs> some, please come help us. And it was, you know, didn't have a lot of money. And uh, there was a little woman in Monroe, Michigan. Her name was Mary. And she was vacuuming and she had just gotten married. And back then, you know, being married and being barren was shameful. Yeah. And that's what she was experiencing. She saw this little TV show and, and um, she called the number, convinced her husband when he came home, <laughs> Say, we need to go and adopt these boys. <laughs> Women do that, you know, we, we're very convinced. And somehow she was so persuasive. And she, <sighs> she persuaded this guy, his name was Robert. Um, they called him Bob and they drove downtown Detroit. <laughs> and they said, I want that little kid that's, that I saw on TV. And they brought her the first one. And he said, no, that's not him. Bought him another. No, that's not him. And by the fifth one, she was about to leave and said, wait a minute, there's one in the back here. Was this him? <laughs> and she turned around she smiled. And that was me. Oh. And all of those kids, and a lot of those kids never made it out. And they took me back to a little church called Second Baptist Church. And they raised me in that church. And, um, and I was really curious about God. Yeah. And I was curious about uh, prosperity and money and business. And none of that was, it was weird because no one had that revelation. And because um, I, I wanted to help people. Yeah. And how are you going to help someone where you can't even help yourself? And if you don't have money. Right. Right. And so, uh, so I set my life on a pathway of studying God's word. I was on the backside of the mountain for a long time. Somehow got into the army and I heard my voice for the very first time. And Sergeant Jackson called me and he said, Private Watkins, call them in to attention. And at that time, I was a 17-year-old knucklehead chasing <laughs> girls and trying to be cool. And, and I said, men, attention. And I heard my voice for the first time. And those men snapped to attention. I'll never forget it. It makes me cry even thinking about it. And I found my purpose right then and there. And I went back, all that study in the Word I did. And God said, I want to use your voice to bring millions and billions into the body of Christ. Amen. And and I spent on, that was 35 years ago. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. So it has been a journey from, it doesn't matter where you start. Yeah. It doesn't even really matter where you are. Yeah. It matters where you're going. And we're walking by faith. And I've been able to affect literally tens of thousands of people. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey. Walking with God is the absolute ecstasy of life. It is. It's There's so nothing fun greater serving God. than serving God, <laughs> even with the little. Yeah. It was just my small voice. Yeah. God has been able to magnify it for his glory. Yeah. And that's what he wants for all of us. He does. Yeah. Uh, we only have a short amount of time left. You've said so much. You, what your, your words are weighty and they are, they do make us wealthy yeah, because they come you. from the word of God. Yeah. But Tell us about your latest book, um, Chosen. Yeah. And what's the subtitle? It's called Chosen, Becoming the Person You Were Meant to Be. Well, 
as you have shared your story, I can see how God chose you. Yeah, and you. you had to be on that television screen. <laughs> you had to be in that orphanage. Yeah. She, Mary, right, yeah. had to see. Yeah. And they had to keep looking and looking because God was choosing you and calling yeah. you out. And uh, it is obvious that yeah. he's called you Thank to you. call men to attention. Mm -hmm. So I want you to call men to attention in whatever yeah. way the Lord wants you to yeah. just look over there yeah. and just flow. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you're called and let me just talk to the men for a moment. And I know, man, you are dealing with a lot being a provider, being a, a husband, or maybe you desire to be a husband. And there's a lot of pressure on you. There's a lot of pressure on you to be a man. It's a lot of pressure uh, to be a woman. But I would say to the men, if you make a decision, not to lie, hide, or dodge from the truth ever again. Just make it up in your mind. You know there's a calling of God on your life. It's been there ever since you said yes to the Lord. It has been there. It is so evident. Just like Jen said, it's evident on my life. I say it's evident on your life. And many of you who are men, you're supposed to call other men to attention. Mm -hmm. I'm just here to confirm what God has already said. I know the Holy Spirit is convicting your heart right now. I know the Holy yes. Spirit is moving in your living room. He's moving on your phone. He's moving through YouTube. He's coming right through these airways. And he's saying this, I chose you. Amen. I love you. Why did God choose you? Listen, you think you chose God. But Jesus said, no, I chose chose you. So here's what God needs you to do. He needs you to make a commitment to stop lying, hiding, and dodging. Come out from among them and be ye separate. You're not what your friends are or saying about you. You are not what the world says about you. You are what God says about you. And let me give you your identity right now, man. You are a king and a priest. You're the king and you're to build your kingdom. What is that? Your family, your children and your children's children. You can't do it by yourself. You have to do it with God. You've tried to do it by yourself. You can't. Listen, I try to do it by myself. I messed up my life and I messed up other people's lives trying to do it myself. But listen, now I'm in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus speaks to me. He, he talks to me. He meets me in the morning. I have a, a wonderful wife now who ministers to me and she's a pastor. God allowed me to marry a pastor. Can you, can you believe that? Thank you, Lord. I cannot have orchestrated the second half of my life. There's no way I could have done this. In my own natural ability, I would be dead right now. And I'm telling you, you're at a breaking point right now. There's a shift that's coming to you right yes. now. And now, I believe God has called you. Amen. Yeah. That is awesome. Mama, grandma, wife, keep praying for your men. Show them this show. God's going to call their hearts home. Go on Dr. Watkins' website. Get this book for them um, so that they can be blessed. Your website is? Conquerworldwide.com. Conquerworldwide.com. Go grab it. We get to meet his wife very soon. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching today. And remember, come home to the heart of God.